I'm going to show you how breathing less, something called CO2 tolerance, what's going to change your life, help reduce anxiety, help with your mental, physical, and emotional states as well. So stay tuned, I'm going to talk about it in this video. Hey guys, I'm Gio. This video is about carbon dioxide tolerance, what it means and how you can use it to improve many functions in your life. So most people don't realize that your CO2 level or carbon dioxide level is actually what triggers you to breathe. And it's not a waste gas at all. It's actually the mechanism that delivers oxygen to all of your cells. So if you have a low CO2 tolerance, which means you can't handle a higher CO2 level, you're gonna have a much poorly functioning system overall. Every time you take in a breath, oxygen goes back up to 100%. But um, depending on how we exhale, it'll really tell us how our CO2 levels are managing, managing the body, okay? So most people think that, you know, just breathing in a larger volume of air is going to um, give us more oxygen in the blood. It's like having a full cup of glass or full glass of water and pouring more water on top thinking we're gonna get more water in the glass. But really the carbon dioxide is what brings it to the cell. So if we can tolerate higher levels of carbon dioxide in the blood, it'll bring a lot more um, oxygen into the cells. So there's something called the Bohr effect, which basically says that when there's a lack of CO2, the hemoglobin or the red blood cell is gonna hold on to oxygen and it's not gonna deliver it to the cells until we have uh, carbon dioxide in the blood and then it will deliver it. So when you breathe less, you increase your carbon dioxide tolerance, so you're taking less breaths in, so you're giving your time um, less exhalation, so the CO2 level will build up, and that will allow more CO2, vasodilates the blood, so it allows you more blood flow to the body as well. When you're breathing more, because you're, you're expelling so much CO2, you actually constrict the blood vessels, so less, less blood gets to all the cells, including your brain, and it creates more stress in the body. So this reaction, this is a vicious cycle. When you're breathing a lot, when you get stressed and nervous, you have these shallow breaths, you're breathing, you're not building up your CO2, you're getting less oxygen to the brain, less oxygen to the body, more stress hormones in the body, inflammation's going up, and it creates this really, really vicious cycle, okay? So um, the more we can train ourselves to stimulate or tolerate higher levels of carbon dioxide, um, the better we're gonna function. Okay, the other thing that having high CO2 tolerance is, is for exercising. So the more you exercise, the more you'll be able to control your breath in, during performance, and the more you know efficiently um, your body will deliver carbon dioxide or oxygen through, through the carbon dioxide to all of your cells. So there's so many other benefits as well, like how you respond to stress. So when you're in a stressful environment, if you have a high CO2 level, you won't get nervous, you won't get upset, you'll be able to breathe, keep your breathing calm. Because breathing is sort of like the gateway to the mind. When, you, when you're breathing quickly, the mind gets more scattered. When you're breathing slow, you're more focused and in control. Um, when we exhale, it actually slows down the heart rate as well. So by slowing down our exhale, it'll actually help to increase our CO2 level. So normal breath in and slow exhale is one tip um, that, that you can work on. So in theory, it's like high altitude training. At high altitude, there's low oxygen and therefore they have a higher carbon dioxide tolerance. And that's why a lot of the athletes that train at higher levels, when they come down to ocean level, they can perform at a much higher um, level because they have a much higher CO2 tolerance. So the average person is probably breathing between 18 to 25 breaths per minute. And what we really want to get down to is optimal, like probably eight to 12, somewhere in the 15 range is probably a good average. But if you can get lower, you're going to train your body how to sort of tolerate uh, carbon dioxide. So one thing you can do is just start, maybe get a timer and just breathe and see how many breaths per minute you're breathing. Another tip, um, which is really important, is to breathe through your nose. Most people breathe through our mouth, you breathe shallow, we breathe up in our chest. One way to increase your CO2 tolerance is to slowly just breathe through your nose. When you breathe through your nose, you can take less air in at a time. So to slow that down, it's gonna give your body more time to build up the CO2. In the beginning, as you're training, you may feel like you need to take a deep breath of air. Uh, you may feel frustrated by that. But over time, your body adapts and gets stronger and it increases your CO2 tolerance. Another tip you can use is when you're exercising, when you go into recovery stage, after you've done like a really hard workout, try not to pass out, but just try to breathe through your nose when you're recovering. So it may feel difficult, like you're not getting enough oxygen. So if you feel dizzy, you know, maybe do it sitting down for the first few times. Um, but always after a sprint or after a workout, at least the first few breaths, breathe through your nose until you feel that strong urge to breathe. That's gonna just be pushing on your CO2 tolerance a little bit. Okay, so some of the benefits of high CO2 tolerance are improved cardiopulmonary function, reduced state anxiety, and better overall control of the autonomic nervous system. So there's something called the CO2 tolerance test, which pretty much 
gives you uh, an indication of how well someone tolerates carbon dioxide in the system. Um, it also will tell you how well you can utilize oxygen and how well you can breathe overall. So um, the results are also highly correlated, as I mentioned earlier, to someone's uh, state anxiety. That is the person's predisposition um, to feeling stressed, anxious, and not in control. Okay, so if you have a really high CO2 tolerance, you're gonna feel relaxed and in control most of the time. And also in everyday life, not when you're stressful situations, you're gonna have a, less, a lower propensity to feel anxious when you have a higher CO2 tolerance. So it really covers a lot of different areas in your life, from mental performance, from physical performance, and to dealing with sort of um, some of the emotional states like anxiety. Okay, so CO2 tolerance tests. Basically, you're gonna take four deep breaths in. Every inhale is gonna be about, you know, five seconds. Um, no, sorry, three to five second on the inhale, maybe five to 10 second out exhale. So we're just trying to normalize our normal breathing pattern. And on the last one, we're gonna take a deep breath in or a normal, totally full breath. And we're gonna start a timer and we're gonna slowly exhale. And as we slowly exhale, um, we're gonna keep going and watch the timer. You can close your eyes, try to relax. When you feel that strong urge to inhale, you're gonna stop the timer. And whatever that time is, or if you run out of air. So you have to really work on how to slowly exhale. It's not about holding your breath, simply. And whatever that time is, is gonna be an indicator of, of your CO2 tolerance level. So less than 20 seconds is very poor. It means that you have high, very high anxiety and stress sensitivity, um, potential pulmonary uh, issues um, because of vasoconstriction and um, you know, maybe some mechanical restriction if you have a lot of tightness. 20 to 40 seconds is the average. So if you're in there, that is the average, but it means there's a lot of room for improvement. So moderate to high stress state anxiety, um, your breathing mechanics can probably use some improvement. 40 to 60 seconds is intermediate. Um, if you focus some work on this, you can pretty, pretty much improve pretty quickly with some carbon dioxide training, CO2 training. Um, 60 to 80 is advanced. You've got a healthy um, cardiopulmonary system, good breathing control, relatively good stress, con stress control, and over 80 is elite. These are for like athletes and people who are in a really, really good state of health. So to recap, do the test, see how you do over time. You can check on it. You can check out our seven day free breath course, elementalacademy.org forward slash breath. There's a lot of resources there. It takes you through a seven day process to help this process. Um, breathing through your nose, trying to slow down your breaths per minute are amazing tools just to easily get into that habit, do it a few times a day. And you know, you can just sit down and do like a meditation where you're just counting your breaths and just slowing them down. So there's a few ways. Restricting the breath, slowing down, breathing through the nose, the easiest, simplest ways to improve your CO2 tolerance. Some people have created masks you can wear while you're working out. There's a lot of fancy stuff, but I'd say just start simple and work your way up. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please share it. If not, that's cool too. Check out our free online course, seven day course. It's free right now to put in this video. Who knows one day it might not be. Check that out too. And yeah, connect with us on social media. I'd love to hear from you guys if you like this video. Have an amazing day. Thanks. Thank you.